M- morning, Carlos. Good to see you. Um, can we start with my usual question, please? Team news, how are you looking heading into the weekend? Any issues to update us on? Not yet. We'll see because some of the players ask for some assessment. During today, in the morning that we have, the, they will be with the medical staff, the two or three players that they feel something. Doesn't look like any serious thing, but after they don't finish with the medical staff, I don't know that like we have the training in the afternoon. At 1 p.m., I will know more with more details in the next hours. Can you tell us which players? No, for one reason, because uh, it's something normal, and I don't want to create any any impact in the mind of anyone when it's something that is normal. Because always two, three, the second day after the, the game, always is a little bit like a strange day, or they feel more impact. Then some of the players, they won't feel in this, and they want to come in the morning to have assessment. It can be the normal things, the normal feeling that I have, or can be something more serious, like make us change our, our mind. But I will say you the name. It will be something, if I will know something now, of any player that cannot play the game with any type of problem. But like it's a normal process. I don't want to create any alert, even for the players, because even the players didn't say that they cannot play, so I cannot create any alert for something that didn't happen. Yeah, so it's nothing to nothing to necessarily be concerned about. What about those who we do know about? What about um, Rolando Aarons? What's his situation? He had a stomach issue, hadn't he? Has that kept him out of both of the games recently? No, after the, the stomach issue, he's fine. He can be one of the available players. He was training these two days and he was excellent in the training. So he's going to be one of the more that we have. And Ryan Schofield, what's his situation? The situation with him is he continues having the problem in the back. We are going to test him today to see if he can react well to be in the bench or he need to continue being out of the team. And just a, a generalised update on Pieper and, and Jordan Rhodes, if we can. I know they've got a long way to go, but how are they How are they dealing with their rehabilitations? Both are well. Both are managing well the timings and the tempo, but still, like you say, it's a long-term process of injury. But from the medical staff, they told me that Pieper is recovering really well from the, from the surgery and Rhodes is managing very well the injury. And both are progressing well, but like we are in the first step of the injury, uh, we cannot know now if we are going to stay or we are going to reduce sometimes the, the, the time. So we are in a one process where both are working well, but we are not in this type of period where you can watch if the injury is going to stay or is going to reduce. For example, uh, Aaron Rowe, I say that I was waiting to work with him in the international break and he didn't train in yet with the group. So in the last part of the period of the injury, of the recovery of the injury, is when you can see he's going to reduce some days or he's going to stand. In the case, for example, of Aaron Rose, he's standing more time that I was choking that he will be standing, and he still is without training with the group. So how far off might he be then, Aaron Rowe, to training with the group? We hope that the next week he can be training with the group, but still we are going to see how he reacts in the next days. How pleasing was Tuesday night for you, Carlos? Please was pleased because we know that we wanted to, to win the game, especially when you arrive after one defeat. Always for me, it's important the reaction of the team. We were playing away against one team that I know that they were doing a very good game against good teams, especially against Fulham, for example, taking the three points. And I was thinking that it would be a, a challenge game. Then when I was watching the team playing with concentration, playing very serious and trying to even with the complicated moments of the game, trying to continue in the game, trying to change some some details to compete in better, uh, always for me, fantastic. And after it's something that happened in football, that for me, the goals change the games. It's something that Santer one player is not playing very well, but as soon as you score one goal, the game can, can change in all the ways. When you score can be very positive for you, when the opponent score can be very positive for them. But it's not about the mentality, that is important. It's not only about the identity. That is important too. All these things are key, but it's important about to don't concede goals and concede the goals because these details can change the games. I, I thought the mentality, you mentioned it there, was was really key on Tuesday night. The first half was was fairly open game, wasn't it? Fairly even game that first half. But as soon as your side got ahead, they sensed they could go and win that game. Three goals in 14 minutes, I think it was. They showed a real killer instinct, I thought, on Tuesday night. Yes, I think, like I said, for me in the first half, there are many, many good actions and there are a lot of problems that we were suffering. For me, the mature of one team, you can see the mature of one team when after our attacks, the opponent doesn't have many chances. 
And it's true that forming the first half in some moments after a task, finishing one chance or in one set piece for the opponent, that is something that we would want to prove, but this is part of the football that always got to happen. But I was watching that the team in the second half was managing too much better these type of situations. And even in some moments of the first half, our attacks finishing in our chances, but the mentality and the concentration, the attention, the focus, and the winning spirit was something that for me was, was key the other day in the game. Can we talk about set pieces? And we've spoken a lot about the delivery of the set pieces and, and how impressive that has been from, from the likes of Sinani and Sorba Thomas, but also the players on the end of it then have to do their bit, don't they? And, and Matty Pearson so far this season has been absolutely excellent at that. How much work goes into it with the centre-halves to finish those balls when they are delivered so well? We are working the same with every player, but it's clear that when you play with three central backs, sometimes you have players less to attack because it's clear that when you play with three central backs, it's not like the fullback. When you play with two central backs, you can have, if we say that the positional midfielder is not going to attack, we are talking that we can attack with seven players and with three players balance more. When you play with three central backs and you keep one positional midfielder that can be hoggy, we are going to say like, it's true that just from the number of players, you are going to attack more with six players and you are going to reduce one player more to attack. But we know that in football, many, not all of the attacks finish in chance. Many of the attacks are going to finish in set pieces. But then now you change. When you are playing with three central backs and you have a set piece situation, you have one more strong player to attack this, this action. And for me now, the, in the set pieces, is not something about the, the work. I think the running players, the players that can hit the headers of the team, for me, go to face the situation with more confidence when they are watching that the deliveries is able to put the ball where we need to, to put the ball because you go with different faith depend about the quality of the delivery. That's why we continue insisting in working a lot in the quality of our deliveries, because it's the first and the key step. After, we know that as soon as we are playing with three central backs, we are having one more header that can take the attention of the defenders and can be one also more to attack this type of situation. So for me, without the delivery, if the delivery is no good, you can have the best headers in the world that the ball, you are not going to have the ball, but when the delivery that is something that we are concentrated a lot to work is making good crosses, it's important always to have the player that arrive from the starting position to the end position. That this is one key point that they need to know why they need to arrive to one space. They need to understand the reason. And after they need to do the effort to arrive to the space where everyone has to arrive. Because if the delivery is fantastic, but you don't arrive with the determination to your right space, we are going to miss good opportunities to create one chance. And how much work in the summer when you were doing recruitment with Lee Bromby and the recruitment team, how much emphasis did you put on set pieces for players that were coming in, both those who could deliver them, but also your centre-backs with the way that they are able to attack them, as you say, when you're playing three, you have such a threat there. Did you specifically say, we need well, players who can finish these situations off? No, because I think in the central-backs, usually it's normal to, to have this type of situation because... You cannot be a central back if you are no good header. You cannot be a championship central back if you are no good header because in championship you are going to defend many times these type of situations. So we can say like with the central backs, more or less, it's true that some are more specialist, another one are less specialist. But we were watching more, for example, in the number of minutes, so that they are robust players more than they are good headers. But it's true that this is one detail that you consider for me just as part as, as a central back, you know that you can have these type of players because they are a good, good in the headers. But after we were more focused in the delivery of players because we knew that the last year, for example, the majority part of the situation was taken by Ben Zambacun, a player that we knew that they wouldn't be here. Even in another moment, they were taken by, by 18 too. Another player that is not here. So we knew that we have Holmes, we knew that in the B-team, the friendly games, the last year, Sorba was showing a good uh, level, but we needed to have the third player that, that we add to the team that will be someone a specialist in the delivery of the set pieces. And that's why Sinan, even without being a, a specialist in the previous team that he was playing, he was showing that he could take a good delivery. But I was more impressed with the deliveries of Sinani when I was working with him, more than with the deliveries that I was watching him because he was sharing his role in the team was he was playing, but he was he has so that is a player that can make a very good delivery in the set pieces. That could be such a big signing, then, couldn't it? Such a key signing in Sanani. 
Yes, of course, we some of the points that we knew that when we recruit him was one player that was able to play as a winger, but two as a number 10. And at the same time, was one player that was necessary to, to have a good delivery in the set pieces. Can we just talk a bit about the mood? We've spoken about confidence before, haven't we? And how players thrive on confidence. It's hard when they're not getting results. What's it like now in, in the group? We've spoken to people in and around the club who have said the atmosphere is fantastic within that group right now. Some people who have been in changing rooms for many, many, many years have said that this group is a really good group that seemed to get on very well together. How big has that been, do you think, in the start of the season you've had? I think it's true that it's a very good group of players. I think it's a very good group of human and professional players. And I think it's a very, I have, I say from the beginning that I have a lot of confidence because we have very good players in each position. And now if you with with we receive the assignment of the doctors. Of course, everyone is important. And I cannot tell you that it's the same to play with one player or to don't have him because it's not true. Because they are having one value that for me, everyone can be everyone is important, but at the same time, we have now more options to play in each position. So for me, we have one group of players, one group of human beings, one group of mentality of professional players with enough experience to can compete in that level even if they didn't compete in that level before. And at the same time, with good alternatives to play in each position, but it's something that in championship, when you play in a row, is necessary. What about Nottingham Forest next then? Parted company with Chris Hewton this week. What do you make to that decision firstly? I have someone not to make a decision, but when you see that one coach is Isaac, is you feel a little bit of, first of all, a lot of respect for him because he's a coach that has been have worked one career very important in England. One play is one coach that I don't remember exactly, but I think three years ago he was playing one final in he was playing the final against Manchester City in, in one of the competitions. I don't remember it was the Carabao or, the, or one of the Cups that he was competing. So it's so about the level that this coach. Sometimes as a coach, we are part of one dynamic. He was someone that when the dynamic was not positive the last year, he was changing this dynamic. And he was taking Nottingham Forest in a complicated situation and he was making them uh, be in a safe position in the table. So he was doing a very good job the last year. And this year, unfortunately for him, the team doesn't start well. In many of the games I was watching the other day, the game, and it's true that the, before Middlesbrough scored the goal, they have a couple of second boss opportunities that they didn't score and maybe you score one and it's just another change and we are talking today with him making exactly the same. But it's true that we know that as a coaches, we suffer the consequences of the result because we are part of our job is to be responsible of the results that when we are taking or when we are not taking the results that we want. So for me, it's part of this, but never is nice to see that any, any coach is sacked, but we understand that this is part of our, our job. And how does it impact, do you think, Nottingham Forest coming up to the John Smiths this weekend? I think they are going to be a very dangerous team. Because if you see the table, you can imagine that you can be thinking that they are not enough good. But when you see the squad, it is total opposite. Because I think they have one group of players that even if they, in seven games, eh, just in seven games, they didn't have a positive result. They have, for me, a squad with many options in each position and with players that can win you, can win you one game eh, in any moment. Because if you talk about some of the players they have that all of you know, you know how much experience they have, how many, how many times they have proof that they have enough quality to play in the championship and compete in a good level. Thank you, Carlos. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jonathan. Steve, we'll come to you, please. Hey, Carlos. Does it change your approach at all to this game with Cuton having been sacked or is it just business as usual for you? I think we are going to work the same because they are going to play with the same players. It means that they are going to use for me the play that they were using. Maybe they can make one change, two changes or three changes, that, but they were doing this before too. So I know that with the previous coach, Graham was playing more as a number 10. And I don't know if the new coach will keep him as a number 10 or he will play more as a number nine. That was the, the position where, where he was playing. But if play as a number nine, Taylor is, or, or Graham, uh, so I expect that they can play with one of these two players. I don't know if Inkenago is going to play on the right or on the left, but at the end, it's Inkenago the same. And I know how important this player can be, how much impact he can make in the league. And after, I don't know 
y Garner will continue playing as a midfielder or they will play with Yates or they will play with, with another midfielder. But at the end, for me, the most important thing is to know the opposition, the level of the position, know the level of the midfielder that they have, the level of the Carvalho as a playmaker or they will play with Graban or they will play with Lonely as a winger. They have many options. That for me, the key is just to know how they are. And we know it's a team that we know because they are many years in the championship. I have played, we have played with many of them the last year two times. We were playing with them uh, before. Then it's more or less to know more about how they are and how the quality that this team can have. That even if they are not getting the results, they are going to be very dangerous team because they have many good players. You've got a good record against Forest in recent years. Um, does that enter into the players thinking or do you need to try and sort of get that out of their heads how does that how does that work when you've got that positive track record against the team I think I, I didn't know so imagine that I am the coach and I didn't know but the, for me the, the the important thing is true that the last year we played against Nottingham Forest at home and was the first winning of the of the team and after the second winning that we achieved against them was necessary and key to keep our target in the last part of the of the season. So it's true that we were competing well two times with them in the last year. Doesn't mean anything. It means that we need to again to compete well if we want to have a positive result. So in our mind, the only thing that can be is like we need to compete always well to can have a good result. In the moment that we don't compete in our level, it's going to be challenging and difficult with any type of opponent. Yeah. And you've we've seen Last few games, as I think, sort of last season, season before, a lot of attacks sort of went down that left side. I, we seem to have seen a bit more developing on the right now. Obviously, with Sorver and Nelson Arnie. is that something that you wanted to have a bit more balance to the pitch? Yes, for me, it's necessary to have a good balance because as soon as you only have one, if we divide the pitch in three, in three corridors, the right, the sides one left, the left one, the right one, and the central one, you need to have a good balance in the three corridors if you want to be one team that don't be predictable for the opponent team. As soon as you only unbalance one team in one side, sometimes because the game, they don't manage well or because you are stronger than the opponent in this because maybe you are very strong in the left and even if they know, the opponent knows that you are very strong, they cannot stop you. So this is something important to be in every corridor of the pitch, be enough, um, be enough strong to can unbalance any type of defender. But it's true that the more alternative you have in attack, the less predictable team you are going to be. So if you can attack very well the right side, you can attack very well the left side, you can attack very well the middle, it would be fantastic. I think the last year, in some moment of the year, we find a good balance because we have, uh, I remember the ocean to, to attack the right side in many of the games with Pipa, with Mbenza, with Etim, they were creating one triangle on the right. To follow Coroma and O'Brien, they were creating one triangle on the left, and the team have a good balance between the two sides. Now this year is different, and now I think the fact that we are playing with one wing back, that is full back, needs sometimes more winger in front of him. The, the fact that you play with one wing back, that is winger, uh, allow you to play with another type of uh, player. So I think there are a lot of things between the relation between the player, between the skills between them, but it's true that your question, I think you are totally right, because the more option you have to attack, the better for you. Is there anything else that you want to add to your side's game? Anything, any new um, developments or anything you want to the side working on, or is it concentrate on what you've been doing so far? I think in the, the way of improvement always has three parts. The first part is keep doing what you are doing well, and keep working if the things if you are managing well some situations. The second point of the improvement or learning process will be add behaviors that you can that you can add in football. Always you can add behaviors. If you are making throws in attack, improve the throws in attack. The better you manage the situations, the the best. If you are making managing throws in defense, throws in defense. The other day, for example. Uh, after sometimes in the back of the results you can forget many things but I don't like to forget they have two good clear chances in the game uh, attacking in the attack that we didn't defense in the way that we have to defense so the better that we defend the corner the more strong team we are going to be a stronger team we are going to be and the third point of the learning process of the improvement presence is eliminate the things that are not working well 
And now it's true that I can know, like I told you, for example, the mature try to eliminate attacks that finish with counter attacks with clear counter attacks of the opponent will be one point. So always in full, there are things that you want to improve. But the key for me is to keep doing what is working, add the new behavior that you need to improve and eliminate the behavior that are not going to help you. For me, are the three points that always we need to have in our minds. Stuff. That's all for me. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Stuart, we'll throw it to you, please. Hi, Carlos. Um, can I just ask, with, with regards to your preparation for this game, because the mood is so good and because the form is so good, does that allow you to focus more on Huddersfield than, than Nottingham Forest in this in this preparation? I know you don't ignore Nottingham Forest, but do you understand it, the, the, the balance is slightly different? I think always in football, the balance has to exist. As soon as you think yes in the opponent, it's going to be negative for your team. As soon as you are just focused in your team, you are, you are not going to contemplate something that is key that is the opponent. For me, always there is a balance between no, the quality of the opponent, which type of actions they are going to demand, because it's a team that they can play short, it's a team that they can be good playing short than trying to play the ball from the back, so we need to know how to press. At the same time, they have very good dangerous players in the front of the attack, so we need to be focused to defend this these teams. Sometimes you are watching the opponent, you are watching that they are very directly team that are going to play balls from the back. So where the pressing in this type of situation is not going to help you. So that's why always the, op the opponent is there, always, because every opponent is enough strong to demand you something in the game. Can be the set pieces, can be the long directly attacks, can be the second balls, can be the, the playing out because they play short, can be the counter attacks. Always, and for me, these type of details that make the difference between the opponents have to be present in the preparation of the games. And you've obviously found a good formula tactically at the moment. Last season at times, you, you, you had to be more flexible tactically. Do you, do you expect that, that three at the back will be a regular feature throughout the season? I don't know. First of all, I don't know. And I am honest with you. I only can tell you that because I don't know what is going to happen. I don't know how the performance of the team is going to go. And I don't know how the performance of the three central bases is going to continue. So first of all, I don't know. Second thing, like I said at the beginning, we are working in three shapes in defense and we are working in three shapes in attack. And I don't want to unbalance this situation. I don't want that the team feel that now only we can compete well if we play with the three central backs because... There are another three center backs and two midfielders because for me, we can be we have to compete well when we play with three center backs and three midfielders or when we play with three midfielders and two central backs. As soon as we unbalance one point of this, we are going to be more predictable team and we are not going to be able to do the things that we want to do. That for me, the key is that we keep with any shape, that we be aggressive in, sense, in offensive half, that we be solid in defensive half, and that we can play and attack with brainness and personality when we have the ball. So for me, managing one of both is going to be the one that depends about our players and depends about the moment of the team and even the opponent allow us to select the one that is going to allow us to show our identity that is for me more important than the formation of the shape. So for me, the key point is the identity. We, need to, we want to use any shape that allows us to show our identity. And just finally for me, can I just ask you about Matty Pearson? We've obviously seen his impact on the field we've seen the goals he scored but what has he contributed to the club in terms of his I don't know his character his leadership the the, the off-field things that we don't really see I think uh, first of all the important things are the things that we are watching in the in the pits when we are playing is first of all when they have the skill to play in a row is something just one positive point because not every player is able to compete well every two days. So first point is the robust, I don't know, you can say the robust or the robustness, robustness, robustness. Yeah. robustness to have him uh, competing in a row. The second thing is just not to be able to play, is just how you compete. And he is one player that arrived to this club playing close to 4,000 minutes in the last two years in the championship. So when you want player, I always respect a lot the minutes of the player when the players have this minute in the championship because they are doing more good things than negative things. And for me, after, uh, when you, if you put these two things together, you can know a little bit more about the personality of the players. When you are playing many minutes and showing this robustness and you are playing in the championship and especially in Matty Pison, arriving to the championship, I think, from all the levels of the leagues so that they have a competitive mentality and they are a very self-demanding type of players. 
So I am watching in Matip is on one very self demanding player that always is positive to have this type of players in the in the club. Excellent. Thank you very much, Carlos. Good luck to you on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks, Stuart. Alfie, you got anything to add? Yeah, hi Carlos, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Can I just ask you about Jonathan Hogg? Obviously, he got a goal at Blackpool, but obviously just more his all-round importance to you and, and the football club. How important he is he is to you? It's clear that uh, first of all he's the captain of the team and we select him the captain of the team for everything that he has done for the club and for everything that he can continue doing for the club. So I am not going to talk about the past that he was in the one of the most successful moments of this club and he was part of this. But at the same time, we decided him to be captain because we think that he can still offer to us some of the strengths. He's someone with this type of character that is more self-demanding than self-confidence. That always for me is important. He's someone that gives many very good balance from the defensive side of the team. But at the same time, he's someone that always is see how he can improve and how he can give more things even in attack. So I think these points make that it's clear that he's one of the most important players that we have right now. Yeah, and obviously he's celebrating his goal the other night. He looked like he enjoyed it, but also all his teammates, you know, looked to be really enthused that he'd scored. You know, that, that must be a key thing, how valued he is within your team. Uh, I think uh, he's a captain of the team, not only because the coach is select, it's clear that for me, all the team, if you ask the players, they all everyone will recognize that he's one of the leaders in this in this club. So and I think Hog is someone that is always demanding the best uh, of to, to everyone because he's someone that he demands the best to himself too. And always uh, they have a good dynamic, a good spirit, is someone that have helped to build this spirit and always for me is a good receiving or very positive spirit that everyone appreciates, and that's why for me everyone up, uh, was celebrating, and especially because not many times we can celebrate with him because his position doesn't allow to do one goal like that one. He scored the last year, but heading one corner against uh, against Bob Muda home. But uh, it's true that not many times you can see one goal like he was scoring the other day that was very important for the team, and everyone was enjoying with him that moment. Yeah, and uh, just finally from me, Fraser Campbell, is he, is he fit and available to come back into your squad this weekend? Yes, he's going to be available tomorrow and he's going to be in the squad. Unless that something happened today, I, I don't. I hope that it doesn't happen. He's going to be one of the players that he want to create the, the group of players for tomorrow. Thanks very much. Uh, good luck this weekend. Thank thanks, you so much. Thanks, Alfie. Jim, thanks for your patience. Hi, Carlos. Uh, just two questions from me, uh, Carlos. Uh, the first one, uh, playing Short on question. them... Short questions. Two questions, yeah. But short, short uh, ones, then I can give you the right answer. Okay, Carlos. That is too long and I, I lose in the middle. Okay, Carlos. You're playing uh, Nottingham Forest this weekend. Uh, their interim coach is Stephen Reid. Uh, Stephen has uh, experience with the Scottish international team with Alex McLeish. He's also a former international player. He's been involved coaching uh, with West Brom as well. So Nottingham Forest is going to be well prepared uh, under Stephen Reid. I think so. It's a one coach with, like you say, with many background as an assistant coach. He was working this year from the beginning with Nottingham Forest, so he's going to know enough well the players. And it's true that when you don't have time to prepare one game, uh, and they have, if they will now introduce a new coach, he wouldn't have enough knowledge of the squad. And I think Steve have enough enough knowledge of the squad because he was working with this group of players from the start of the season. And if you add to this, the, the spring that he has had as an assistant of very good coaches, of course, that they are going to be commanding the game by one, by one someone that can do perfectly. That's why I think nothing has made that decision. And finally, for me, Carlos, uh, just on a player that's on loan from the club uh, from West Ham, Mipo uh, Odebeke, uh, just on Mipo there, there's a bit of uh, scrutiny at the moment in terms of his international future. He's been uh, Irish under uh, Irish international. He's played all the way up along with Ireland. He's been called into the Irish under 21 international team, but Nigeria are looking for his to declare for Nigeria as well. Has that really affected the player? He's played for you twice so far this season. All the scrutiny about him declaring for his international future is a weighing on his shoulders a bit. 
No, I was watching the play, how they play right now. I am watching that is a play with a lot of potential, but it's still young. It's still one player that needs to adapt, first of all, to the club and after to the demanding of the competition. The faster that he does this adaptation, depending on the level of the striker, the more options he can have to, to play. Everything always depends about how the player progress. Sometimes the player progress fast, very fast, and after the decrease, sometimes the player is progressing little by little. I am watching one striker with many good skills, but still we have to adapt better to the style of game and at the same time to the competition too. Cheers, Carlos. Thank you. You're welcome.